Go ahead. What do I have to say? Just, just the question, please. No speech. What is the question? What do you have to say to the trans students on this campus who feel actively victimized by your presence here? Life's tough. Get a helmet, man. I'm too pregnant for this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Candace Owens, lover or hater, as you can see at that first one there, just absolutely ripping into these woke students, these annoying students who think that the world revolves around them. And they believe that if you don't agree with them, if you don't think the exact same way that they do, you're a bigot, that you're a fascist, they'll call you every single name under the sun just because you disagree with them. And that's the way we've become, right? This day and age, a lot of the population nowadays say they cannot have a productive conversation, a not even an argument, but just disagreeing with each other. You can either try to change someone's mind or you can just agree to disagree, right? Nowadays, it's not like that. People will get violent. People will get aggressive just because you don't believe or agree with the same way that they think. And that's what I think these new students, these, these people coming through, Gen Zs, they don't understand that the only reason why our world is and innovated as it is, is because people think differently. If everyone just thought the same way, no one would ever make something new. Everyone will just fall in line and agree with everything they've got to say. And yeah, my nose is a little bit blocked as well. I don't know if you can hear it, but yeah, it's day three of covid the third time so <laughs> uh we'll see how this one goes but yeah making videos out here just to prove how crazy these kids are becoming and we already know about it i mean i've made a lot of videos on it and yeah let's have a look at it here now uh, before we do if you do like the video please leave a like on it comment as well let me know what you think about these modern day fake activists these you know victimhood mentality kids let me know below what you think about that and please subscribe like I said, more than 90% of my viewers are not subscribed. So if you do think that I've earned it, please subscribe below. It'll help a lot and you'll be able to see my, my videos in the future. Now let's get into this one here from Candace. She was just talking about how kids were sent to World War II and World War I. And people had to send their kids off knowing right well that they'll probably die. But these kids were brave enough to put their life on the line to save the people in their country. Now let's have a listen. I mean, think about the, the women who were sending their sons. I can't imagine sending my son at the age of 18, knowing for certain that he's going to die, right? Women were stronger back then, men were stronger back then, and they looked it. But look at the photos of those 18 year olds who served in World War II. They look like men, right? You can see their boyish features and their boyish eyes, but they, they look bigger than the 18 year olds that we are producing today. Which brings me to something that I do every year, multiple times a year. I visit college campuses, and I just want to give myself a pat on the back for being able to stand there and to do it right now, especially <laughs> I am eight months pregnant, having to sit into this room and to deal with people, not people who are going out knowing if they don't have enough fuel to get home, going out knowing if they're going to die for their country, but people that think it's an act of bravery to have to listen to a conservative speak. Oh my God, I feel so sad for these people. How am I gonna be able to sit here and listen to a conservative speak? It always makes me angry, actually, when I see the individuals, the adults, the young adults that we are producing today, because I think about that. I think about the past, which is so recent, really, in our American history, our very short American history. And then I compare them to these individuals who I speak in front of, and then they get the courage to ask me a question. They stand up and they try to have what they believe is their Martin Luther King moment. They're gonna say something strong and assertive to Candace Owens. It's gonna be, <laughs> I have a dream speech. It happens over and over again. Well, yesterday I visited a campus up in Albany, New York, and as was to be expected, I had a very short fuse with these children because I'm not here to raise you. I don't know why you turned out this way. I don't know why you think that it's an act of bravery to ask a conservative a question or to insult a conservative. Um, but I was required to answer these individuals for about 30 minutes and it was just incredible how many people from the queer community had something to say to me. Take this young woman as an example. Take a listen. What do you have to say to the trans students on this campus who actively feel victimized by your presence here today? Additionally, you just pointed out that this man detransitioned, but earlier in your speech... You Guys, I want to hear her. Go ahead. What do I have to say? Just, just the question, please. No speech. What is the question? What do you have to say to the trans students on this campus who feel actively victimized by your presence here? Life's tough. Get a helmet, man. I'm too pregnant for this. Next question. 
<laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Seriously, somebody just give out free hugs or something and then uh, somebody give out free hugs. I don't I can't be your mommy, okay? I'm too pregnant. I can't be your mommy. Yeah, I 100% I agree with this. Like, why are you even there if you feel, you know, that it is offensive that she's there? Why would you even turn up to it and actually make the crowd bigger? Give your time to someone you really disagree with or you really dislike. And that's a dumb thing to me. So every single person that any single person disagrees with that comes onto your campus, are you there every single time? I bet you you're not. It's just whenever you know there's a camera and you know it's easy for you to go and ask a question because she's just going to answer it. That's when you want to jump up and make this whole thing about, you know, the whole trans community does not want you here. And we feel afraid that you are here just because you're going to attack us with words. Wow. Words hurt more, right? I mean, what happened to the old saying, right? I mean, we got brought up on it. You probably did as well. Is sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. I know this, this saying might be, you know, we've heard a lot of times, but I feel like Gen Z, they need to be told this. Kids these days who are being raised right now, if you're a parent, please teach them that saying. Please just tell them that words do not hurt as much as breaking your damn bones. But for this new generation, all these kind of people, the people that go and ask Kendall Owens questions, they act like just by her talking some words, it literally inflicts damage on them. You know, like someone disagreeing and someone just talking. Oh no, how dare they, they say these words, it hurts. You just being here is bad enough. Grow up, like seriously, go, go get a life. Like she said, get a helmet, toughen up, and get out of here, move on. For me to wear. Yes, you're not going to see it in this clip, but underneath his sweatshirt, he did some art, and he wore a shirt that said F you, and he had one of his friends recording it because so brave to do artwork. And Candace Owens comes to speak and to hide an F you shirt underneath your sweatshirt. Take a listen to what he had to say. My question isn't specifically about anything you really said tonight, although I don't really agree with anything you said. Um, okay. I'm proudly part of the LGBTQ community. Uh, I've always stood up for my community whenever I needed to. Um, I want to focus specifically on, uh, I've been like listening to you for a little bit just to understand some things. Um, a, a live stream you did about Pride Month in June on Facebook because you were no longer allowed on YouTube. Um, the event that you were talking about, I actually had the honor of attending that event uh, with a lot of my really close friends, and I, I found it very perplexing to me how you choose to only focus on the things that are negative when it comes to the queer community. Um, sorry, when it comes to what community? The queer community. Okay. I like, sorry. do you not realize that people like you and people like the people you're around and that, you know, continue to have this idea of us are the reason we feel that we have to be so openly proud of who we are? Your demented, homophobic, and, and transphobic rhetoric and rants just further prove our point that we have to fight loudly to be respected. All right, like you could just see she was winding up. She's like, I'm going to rip this kid a new one. And like she said to that girl before is, I don't want this whole damn speech. Just ask me a question and move along because there's a lot of people that want to ask questions. Don't do this whole speech you've written down on your phone. Like this is, this is his like life story he's telling her right now. He's like... Like she said, his, the Martin Luther King moment, you know, they're like, oh, I want a standing applause from everyone here. I want everyone to stand up in the crowd and applaud me for how brave I am. Just to ask a freaking question. And you're not even good at asking a question because you're constantly adding all this stuff on. Just ask it a question and let her answer it. The reason that LGBTQIA plus suicide rates are so high in this country isn't just because we're part of the community. It's because there are people like you who make us feel like we don't belong. The only LGBTQ agenda we have is... Okay, is, it a, is there a question in there or a speech? Yes. You got to ask a question, buddy. I how know you wrote you, out how, this out in your notes, but ask a question. Let's how go. How do you and how do you think other people who, with your beliefs respond to the fact that your hateful and harmful rhetoric, rhetoric costs the lives of queer children every single day, on average, every 45 seconds. Okay, so this is just going to be a pure boogeyman. You're, you're pretending that someone committed suicide because of Candace Owens. You've got no facts here. You're just going, it's your rhetoric that's causing all of this. So I really his wish face. I could show you. Oh, uh, let's go back and watch his face one more time, Okay, so this is just going to be a pure... You're just going... Look at his face. No, 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 no. I swear, I swear. Uh, it, it's because... Not, no, no, not just... Yeah. But that is the face that I guess 
we make as well every time they ask these stupid questions and like why even ask this question like what are you trying to say about this trying to talk about all these statistics and everything like that it is not because of someone maybe saying certain things it's about in their own mind right like and yet again this comes back to that again where, where i say is if if people get taught at a younger age especially the lgbtq community who do have a higher rate of suicide if you can teach them that words don't hurt and then they can stop trying to blame it on people like candace owens who who talk out against this community who have taken advantage of it i mean everyone is happy you know most people are pretty happy with same-sex marriages these days and all that type of stuff so and most people agree as well if you're an adult you know you do whatever with your body if you want to become trans do it like you're an adult you pay for it you do what you want to do right like that's your choice i'm very happy for you good on you and then if you legally change your name i will call you by that name am i going to call you by the gender you want to be called no because i don't believe in that sort of thing but each to their own yet again some people might now, if they get taught words don't hurt, it doesn't matter if Candace Owens, it doesn't matter or if Joe Rogan, it doesn't matter if Tim Pool, it doesn't matter if any of them come out and talk badly about the LGBTQ community, because you realize in your head that words don't hurt me. They can have their opinion, freedom of speech, as long as they're not inciting violence, as long as they just disagree with me in a peaceful manner, that's fine. Because I bet you damn well guarantee that they disagree with a lot of things that they talk about and they probably have YouTube channels and they probably have TikToks and they talk um, in their own way. Would it be fair for Candace Owens to come out and say, oh, well, you really hurt our feelings by the way, you no. They would, they would laugh at it and say, toughen up. The exact same way that it should be the other way around. Toughen up, buttercup. Now, I'll end it on that one. Let me know what you think about these students always trying to make such a big thing about it it's literally just one person candace owens on the stage talking to you and you're trying to make this gigantic speech and you know blah 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 moment let me know what you think about these stupid questions they ask like the video if you liked it and please subscribe as well if you do want to see future content like this and you'll be able to see it thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one